In our previous videos, we've learned a little bit about SGML, XML, and HTML, and we know there are certain things that they have in common. So let's try some XML, but let's do it as HTML so we can get a bit of a validation of our approach. So first of all, I'm going to start with just a normal text editor. We're going to make a really simple file. You could use Microsoft Expression Web, you could use Visual Studio, or any number of other great uh, HTML editing tools. But let's roll up our sleeves and, and, and try and figure this out just by writing a simple text document. So first of all, I'm going to choose Save As, and I'm going to save this as, let's say, index.html. Now, let me put that in quotes because you see the Save As type down here is text. If I put this in quotes, it's going to save it literally as what's in quotes, which is index.html. I could change the Save As type, but sometimes it's just easier to put the whole file name in quotes. So there we go. If nothing else, you've just learned a really good shortcut. Now, we know that XML requires a root element. So let's start with a root element called HTML. That's the element that opens and closes our document. And so we close, again, with HTML. Remember that an open element has the less than and greater than symbol and the element name in between. Remember that the element, we want to start it with an alphabet, alphabetic character. Afterwards, we can have a number. Um, but uh, a lot of times we'll use just straight up text in, in an element. So that's our root element. Now we know that a document will have only one root element, so all other elements must be inside of the root element. They must be children. Typically we'll tab each time we make a child. So here I might say head, and then notice that Notepad++ keeps my tab where it is, which is good. So I'll go ahead and close head just like so. Within head, I might make title. Okay, just like so. And then once again, a closed title tag, just like so. So remember what we call it when an element contains another element. We call that a complex type. On the other hand, if an element just contains text, like my homepage, homage, homepage, we'll call that a simple type. So in this case, title is a simple type. So we see that HTML is the grandparent, head is a child, and then title is a child of head. So actually, HTML, the grandparent, head, the parent, and then title is the child. Now we see, because I've saved this with the HTML extension, Notepad++ is kind enough to highlight the open and close sets as soon as I click on an open or a close. This is good to make sure that we, well, first of all, it's good because it helps us to find our open and close sets, but also it makes sure that we didn't misspell one. For example, if I change the L to a 1, it's kind of hard to see like so, but you'll notice when I click around and, and these two don't highlight together, we can see that I have a subtle misspelling, and then as soon as I fix it, okay, our open and close are going to highlight together. Okay, let's make another child of HTML. This one we're going to call body, and then we'll close off body. Okay, and in between these two, we might say, uh, just a moment, we'll click in here, and we'll say, welcome to my page. Now, I'm going to save. Let's see if this works. I'm using Notepad++. Certainly, you can use any text editor of your choice. One thing I like about Notepad++ is this feature. Edit, copy to clipboard, copy full file path to clipboard. So that copies what you see up in this title bar into my clipboard. In other words, all I need to do is go to a browser, open a new tab, control V, and look at what it pastes. It pastes the entire path all the way down to my index.html. So I hit enter and take a look. Welcome to my page. You see, we have started now a valid HTML document. Do you remember our trick to view the source of an HTML document on any website? Uh, in, in most browsers, control and press U or right click and view source and take a look at what we have here. HTML, head, body, and title. Sure enough, we have a document that looks a whole lot like the one that we just created. Okay, so there we go. So let's add a few more things to this. Um, let me describe what we have. We know the root element of, of HTML. That's just a required element, a good one to have. Head is where we put things that the user typically will not see. One exception is title. Title uh, is usually what we'll see up in the title bar or the tab. You see here it says my homepage. 
take a look at what that matches, my home page. If I shorten this and I call it just home page and I save and I come back and refresh, watch the title. You see that changed to home page. So title is what appears in that tab up at the top of our page. And then body is text that the user will see. So within body, I have welcome to my page. Let me make this an H2 tag, which is a font size. So H2 is relatively large. Notice I have an open tag, so I have to give it a close as well. And I say anything that's within this welcome to my page uh, is going to be H2. Now I can say uh, more to come in the near future. And let's see if that has the same font as welcome to my page. Let's see if these are the same size or if they're different sizes. So I save, refresh. Okay, notice this is a bigger font, welcome to my page, and this is a smaller font, more to come in the near future. Okay, uh, so we'll say I plan to add some web services. Okay. Just a, a bit of random text. And by the way, it's generally considered a bad idea uh, to put like an under construction link in a web page or more to come. Just show what you already have. Don't, don't uh, make the user click somewhere just to see under construction. Anyway, let's take this. I plan to add some web services. Let me hit enter a few times and now I'm going to hit save. And we go back to our page, refresh. Uh-oh, take a look, it put it all on one line. Well, remember that HTML does not pay attention to white space beyond the first character. So it doesn't, it doesn't care that we've put this on a physically separate line. When it draws the page, it puts it all together on one line. So let me make it put it on a different line by using a tag called BR. Now BR is a self-closing tag. We remember what those look like, a singleton or a self-closing tag. It's going to have uh, the name of the tag and then the slash comes at the end of the tag, which indicates that this tag is not an open and closed set. It's one tag that is self-closing. So I put in the BR, which represents a line break. I refresh my page and note that it brought our line down one more line. I can put in one more BR and I can actually give a blank line between the two. So yet another BR and refresh. And there we go. We see we get a blank line between the two. Okay. I can style up text within a line, uh, so I don't need to break a line to add a tag, in other words. I can say EM, which means emphasis, the near future. Okay, now I really should close this tag, but what happens when I don't? I come back and notice that everything after the tag becomes italicized. So that's why we need to close a tag, because watch what happens when I close off the EM at the end of this line in the near future. So open EM, close EM, and now we go back. I'm going to refresh in just a moment, but I do want to point out, note that this last line is italicized as well as in the near future here. Now watch what happens when I refresh. When I refresh, this includes our close EM tag, and you see that the last line went back to a normal non-italicized case because we terminated the EM or the emphasis after this in the near future. Once again, control U, we can look at source and we can validate that we have what we think. So sure enough, there's our open EM, there's our close EM. Okay, looks good so far. So what else can we do? Well, we know about attributes. So I could say body BG color equals, okay. And then within BG color, I could do something like, uh, well, let's go find a color. Actually, let's go, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to plant places and I will control U. And for this one might be a little bit tricky. Might need to go just a few steps here to find a color uh, because I believe I have it in a cascading style sheet. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, let's see, we'll click on style CSS. We'll grab this color right here. Okay, so we grab this. Okay, BG color, save. And let's go back and refresh our page one more time. And notice the background color is now green. The same green that we see, this kind of plant places green right here. Probably be better if I pick the beige color, that might go a little bit better. Uh, that's easy enough to change. So here's the beige color, control C. Nonetheless, what you notice is that BG color is an attribute of the tag called body. So we put it on the open body tag because it's describing 
the background color of the body. Remember an attribute, name equals value. Uh, an attribute is typically in the open set of an open closed pair, and the attribute is a way of describing this entire element. So in this case, we're describing that the element needs to be beige. I've just changed it to beige. That's a little more pleasing to the eye, isn't it? So we see that we've learned just a few simple HTML elements here, but nonetheless, we've put together a page which is valid HTML and also meets a lot of the rules for XML. There's still more to go on this. We're going to see how we can separate the look and feel or the style uh, by using a cascading style sheet. So that's yet to come. We'll also see how we can validate this document, or in other words, we can provide a link to a DTD or XSD document, which describes the elements and the order of elements that we see in this document. So more to come, but nonetheless, in just about a dozen lines, we've seen how to very easily make an HTML page by thinking of it through the glasses of XML. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much.